To understand neurological space, Dr. Leary assumes that the nervous system consists of eight potential circuits, or gears, or mini-brains. Four of these brains are in the usually active left lobe and are concerned with our terrestrial survival. Four are extraterrestrial, reside in the silent or inactive right lobe, and are for use in our future evolution. This explains why the right lobe is usually inactive at this stage in our development, and why it becomes active when the person ingests psychedelics. We will explain each of the eight brains briefly. Number one, the biosurvival circuit. This invertebrate brain was the first to evolve two to three billion years ago and is the first activated when a human infant is born. It programs perception onto an either-or grid divided into nurturing helpful things which it approaches and noxious dangerous things which it flees or attacks. The imprinting of this circuit sets up the basic attitude of trust or suspicion which will last for life. It also identifies the external stimuli which will ever after trigger approach or avoidance. Number two, the emotional circuit. This second, more advanced biocomputer forms when vertebrates appeared and first began to compete for territory, perhaps 500 million BC. In the individual, this bigger tunnel reality is activated when the DNA master tape triggers the metamorphosis from crawling to walking. As every parent knows, the toddler is no longer a passive biosurvival infant, but a mammalian politician, full of physical and psychic territorial demands, quick to meddle in family business and decision making. Again, the first imprint on this circuit remains constant for life, unless brainwashed, and identifies the stimuli which will automatically trigger dominant aggressive behavior or submissive cooperative behavior. When we say that a person is behaving emotionally egotistically or like a two-year-old, we mean that he or she is blindly following one of the tunnel realities imprinted on this circuit. Number three, the dexterity symbolism circuit. This third brain was formed when humanoid types began to differentiate from other primate stock, circa 4 to 5 million BC, and is activated when the older child begins handling artifacts and sending human speech units. If the environment is stimulating to the third circuit, the child takes a bright imprint and becomes dexterous and articulate. If the environment is made of stupid people, the child takes a dumb imprint, remains more or less at the five-year-old stage of artifact clumsiness and symbol blindness. Let's do a quick recap here. In popular speech, the first circuit tunnel reality is generally called consciousness, per se. The sense of being here now in this body oriented to the survival of the body. When you are unconscious, the doctors may perform surgery on you or enemies may attack you, and you will not evade them or flee. The second circuit in the same vernacular language is called ego. So-called ego is the second circuit mammalian sense of status in the Packer tribe. The third circuit is what we generally call mind the capacity to receive, integrate, and transmit signals produced by the humanoid hand or the humanoid language muscles, speech. The imprinting of these three circuits determines by about age three and a half the basic degree and style of trust or distrust that will color consciousness, the degree and style of assertiveness or submissiveness that will determine ego status, and the degree of style of cleverness or clumsiness which mind will handle tools or ideas. In evolutionary terms, first brain consciousness is basically invertebrae, passively floating towards nurture and retreating from danger. Second brain ego is mammalian, always struggling for status in the tribal packing order. Third brain mind is paleolithic, hooked onto human culture and dealing with life through a matrix of human-made gadgets and human-created symbolism. The fourth brain is post-humanoid, specifically characteristic of Homo sapiens, the domesticated man. This is number four, the sociosexual circuit. This fourth brain was formed when humanoid packs evolved into societies and programmed specific sex roles for their members, circa 30,000 BC. It is activated at puberty when the DNA signals trigger the glandular release of sexual neurochemicals and the metamorphosis into adulthood begins. The first orgasms or mating experience imprint a characteristic sex role, which again is biochemically bonded and remains constant for life, unless, of course, some form of brainwashing or chemical re-imprinting is accomplished. In daily speech, Fourth circuit imprints and tunnel realities are known as the adult personality. Masters and Johnson have demonstrated that specific sexual dysfunctions, so-called perversions, fetishes, lower and overformers conditions like premature ejaculation, impotence, frigidity, etc., or imprints defined as sinful by the local tribe are determined by specific experiences in early adolescent mating. The same is true of the equally robotic behavior of the normal, well-adjusted person. The sex role of the human is as rote and repetitious as that of any other mammal, or bird, or fish, or insect. 
These four circuits are normally all the networks the brain has ever activated. It should be clear now why Leary calls them terrestrial. They've evolved on and have been shaped by the gravitational, climatic, and energy conditions determining survival and reproduction on this kind of planet circling this variety of type G star. Intelligent organisms born in outer space, not living at the bottom of a 4,000-mile gravity well, not competing for territory on finite planet surface, not limited by the forward, back, up, down, right, left parameters of earthly life, would inevitably develop different circuits imprinted differently and not so inflexibly Forward back is the basic digital choice programmed by the biocomputers operating on circuit one. Either advance, go forward, sniff it, touch it, taste it, bite it, or retreat, back away, flee, escape. Up down, the basic gravitational sense appears in all ethological reports of animal combat. Rear up, swell the body to maximum size, growl, howl, shriek, or cringe, drop the tail between the legs, murmur softly, skulk away, crawl, and shrink the body size. These are domination and submission signals common to Iguana, Dog, Bird, and the chairman of the board of the local bank. These reflexes make up Circuit 2 Ego. Right-left is basic to the polarity of body design on the planet face. Right-hand dominance and associated preference for the linear left lobe functions of the brain determine our normal modes of artifact manufacturer and conceptual thought, i.e. third circuit mind. It is no accident then that our logic and our computer design follows the either-or binary structure of these circuits. Aristotle's logic and Newton's physics are metaprograms synthesizing and generalizing first brain forward back, second brain up down, and third brain right left programs. The fourth brain dealing with the transmission of tribal or ethnic culture across generations introduces the fourth dimension, time. Since each of these tunnel realities consists of biochemical imprints or matrices in the nervous system, each of them is specifically triggered by neurotransmitters and other drugs. So here's the good stuff, people. To activate the first brain, take an opiate. Mother opium and sister morphine bring you down to cellular intelligence, bio-survival passivity, the floating consciousness of the newborn. This is why Freudians identify opiate addiction with the desire to return to infancy. To activate the second tunnel reality, take an abundant quantity of alcohol. Vertebrae territorial patterns and mammalian emotional politics immediately appear when booze flows, as Thomas Nash intuitively realized when he characterized the various alcohol states by animal labels. Ass drunk, goat drunk, swine drunk, bear drunk, etc. To activate the third circuit, try coffee or tea, a high-protein diet, speed, or cocaine. At the time of this writing, the specific neurotransmitter for circuit 4 has not been synthesized yet but it is generated by the glands after pubescence and flows volcanically through the bloodstreams of adolescence. I, I think uh, at this time, 2013, uh, it would be Viagra, probably. I wonder if Viagra has any uses outside of the bedroom. Perhaps if you took a Viagra and then made some business decisions or got some internet research done. I don't know. None of these terrestrial drugs change basic biochemical imprints. The behaviors which they trigger are those which are wired into the nervous system during the first stages of imprint vulnerability. The circuit 2 drunk exhibits the emotional games or cons learned from parents in infancy. The circuit 3 mind never gets beyond these permutations and combinations of those tunnel realities originally imprinted, or abstractions associated with the imprints through later conditioning, and so forth. But all this Pavlov Skinner robotism changes drastically and dramatically when we turn to the right lobe, the future circuits and extraterrestrial chemicals.